for this next part, I've moved to a different setup. It's the same basic layout as what we were looking at before with the two interferometer arms, except now my translation stage is a little more precise. I have a coarse and a fine adjustment giving me finer control over the positioning of the mirror. Uh, why we need that it will become obvious in a few minutes. I've also replaced the laser with a sodium lamp, which is basically just a, a bulb full of hot sodium gas. You can see it's emitting quite a bit of light here. All you need to couple into the uh, interferometer to go is a point source. So there's just a tiny little hole here. That, that's actually pretty hot. There's a, a tiny little hole emitting the sodium light, which is going into our interferometer. So again, we're using uh, the point source for the light that's giving us spherical waves going into your interferometer, just like we saw in the, uh, with, the, with the laser. Uh, the sodium lamp, though, is not sending all that much energy. Most of its energy is going into heat, into heating up this tube. Uh, only a little bit is coming out as light. And so the interference pattern we're going to be looking at is quite a bit dimmer. So I need to do this next part with the lights out. So I'll be mounting the camera on a stand and doing this with the lights off, and you'll just hear the voiceover as you look at the interference pattern on the screen over here. So now the camera is mounted, and I have to apologize for the quality of the video, but the image is very dim. It's much easier to see by eye, but a little hard to record on camera. But we can see our, our familiar bullseye pattern, and I'm going to reach in and start translating the, uh, the stage towards the uh, bean splitter. And you can see as I do that, the pattern disappears as I turn the knob, and then... Oh, but the pattern's disappeared here, right? But if I keep going, you can see the pattern comes back again, always translating in the same direction. You see the pattern appearing, and then it disappears, and it comes back, and then it disappears again. So I find it's a little easier to distinguish where the pattern has disappeared, where the contrast has gone to zero, than rather than determining where it's at a maximum. I'm going to, the next time it disappears, I'm going to pause and measure where that micrometer reads, and right now I'm at 4.10 millimeters. All right, and then we're going to keep going, and the pattern comes back again. All right, and now it's disappeared, and that is 4.38 millimeters. We keep going. Back, disappears at 4.68 millimeters. And then we're back. Looks like we're gone again. Four point nine seven you also see our bullseye pattern is getting larger meaning we're moving the mirror closer to the position where the two arms are the same length we'll call that 5.26 millimeters The bullseye no longer looks like a bullseye. I think I skipped over this. All right, so right there, that is 5.55.
Well, let's do one more. That is 5.84 millimeters. All right, and then sure enough, they come back yet again. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. All right, so those numbers are what you need to calculate the spacing between the wavelengths being emitted by the sodium lamp. The sodium lamp puts out two separate wavelengths separated by some small number and you can calculate that spacing from this periodicity.